All right, y'all, welcome to the show. I got a great one for you today. So, um, to my surprise, we now have a war that's brewing between CNN and MSNBC. Um, this is the first time since I've been following the news that that's a thing. Usually, they kind of stay in their own lane and mind their own business. It used to be the case that Fox, CNN, and MSNBC stayed in their own lane. Now you have CNN and MSNBC take shots at Fox and vice versa. But this is the first time I've seen CNN and MSNBC turn their guns on each other. And boy, oh boy, is that delicious. I'm enjoying it very much, if I'm being honest with you. Um, then we have a heated debate on Newsmax over the Jordan Neely killing. We're going to dive into that. We also have uh, some pretty prominent establishment Democrats now questioning Joe Biden and sort of turning on him, sort of hitting him with the like, I don't know, man, I don't know if you're up to uh, for this fight. I don't know if you're up for this challenge. I don't know if you could take on... Donald Trump again, or Ron DeSantis potentially. Um, and then later on, the My Pillow guy, Mike Lindell, has spent tens of millions of dollars trying to prove that the 2020 election was fraudulent and stolen. And uh, now he is bankrupt and he's begging people for money. So maybe don't go down that rabbit hole in the first place and spend all your money on a obvious falsehood. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into it here. So you guys remember, it was not that long ago that um, CNN had a town hall with Donald Trump, hosted by Caitlin Collins. Um, now, Caitlin Collins is just stunningly uncharismatic. I mean, she is snooze fest all day long, human ambient. And she's not up to the challenge. I mean, look, even, even though she tried to, like, push back against Trump, he just, he just rolls right over her, right? Like, it's nothing for him. He's got more charisma in his pinky than she has in her whole body. And um, she just didn't do a good job. And so that led to quite a bit of a backlash. Now, there were some people on the left and some liberals who were basically saying, like, how dare you platform Trump? I don't agree with that criticism. I think that criticism is silly. He's the former president. He's the front runner right now running another campaign for 2024. You can't just, like, pretend he doesn't exist. I think that's beyond goofy, right? But I do think there is fair criticism against CNN. It's just you had to do a better job in the town hall. You had to have a host who can handle it. You had to have a host who can push back effectively and aggressively and sort of match Trump in the realm of uh, charisma and communication skills. And Caitlin Collins just isn't it. I mean, I think Jake Tapper maybe would have been the least bad option, although I'm sure I probably would have had criticisms even if Jake Tapper did it. But um, Anderson Cooper went out after this uh, event and the backlash and he basically played defense for Chris Licht, CNN, and their new management about, you know, why this town hall was a good idea. So let's uh, watch a little bit of this. And then after this, we have Joy Reid of MSNBC fires back at CNN and Anderson Cooper and basically accuses them of lying and being gaslighters and starts an all-out war between the networks. So let's watch. Many of you have expressed deep anger and disappointment. Many of you are upset that someone who attempted to destroy our democracy was invited to sit on a stage in front of a crowd of Republican voters to answer questions and predictably continued to spew lie after lie after lie. And I get it. It was disturbing. It was disturbing to see and hear that person refer to a black law enforcement officer as a thug, an adjective he used many times to describe black men, and call Caitlin Collins, the moderator, nasty, which is what he calls any woman who stands up to him. It was disturbing to hear him speak so highly of QAnon conspirators and insurrectionists who assaulted police officers in our democracy on January 6th. I just want to pause to point out, let's all stop kidding ourselves. This stuff is totally predictable, right? Like, it was it disturbing? No, this is what I expect from Trump on a random Tuesday, right? Like, this is not... All of this is incredibly predictable. I actually think it's rather stale, and tired, and pathetic, and sad. Like, those are the words I would use to describe it, but he's going down the path of like, oh, this was a shock to the conscience, good sir. But he's doing all that to set up the more important point. And it was awful to hear him spread ridiculous lies about the election. And it was certainly disturbing to hear that audience, young and old, our fellow citizens, people who love their kids and go to church, laugh and applaud his lies and his continued defamation of a woman who, according to a jury of his peers, he sexually abused and defamed. 
that was part of the problem too, is that, and John Stewart made this point, it was set up all about access. It's set up because they want the ratings of Trump being there and they want him to come back. So they gave him everything he wanted. I mean, even having an audience full of Republican voters and right-leaning independents, they basically rigged the deck to make it so that he's going to get positive reactions. And that is safe space of garbage. That's nonsense. Just have an open audience with all different kinds of people. So that, again, was another part of the problem here. As good a job as Caitlin Collins did trying to fact check him, it is impossible to fact check fully because he lies so shamelessly. But is it? But is it really, though? Is it? Look, I mean, I have my issues with this guy, but I think Mehdi Hassan, for example, if this was an MSNBC town hall, I think he would have been able to handle it just fine. I think he would have been able to handle it well actually. So I, I don't think it's impossible. I think they picked the weakest link on purpose. They picked the female Wolf Blitzer on purpose. Now, many of you think CNN shouldn't have given him any platform to speak, and I understand the anger about that. Giving him the audience, the time, I get that. I don't get that. I, that's Again, that's the part I disagree with. You can't, uh, you're platforming the president, one of the most well-known people on planet Earth. Well, he's the former president, and he's running now, and he's leading by a mile. You can't just be like, la, 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 you don't exist, la, 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 la. In fact, the problem is quite the opposite when it comes to people like Marianne Williamson. It's like, you should be giving her more coverage, and you're not, right? But this is what I also get. The man you were so disturbed to see and hear from last night, that man is the front runner for the Republican nomination for president. And according to polling, no other Republican is even close. That man you were so upset to hear from last night, he may be president of the United States in less than two years. And that audience that upset you, that's a sampling of about half the country. They are your family members, your neighbors, and they are voting. And many said they're voting for him. Now, maybe you haven't been paying attention to him since he left office. Maybe you've been enjoying not hearing from him, thinking it can't happen again. Some investigation is gonna stop him. Well, it hasn't so far. So if last night showed anything, it showed it can happen again. It is happening again. He hasn't changed, and he is running hard. You have every right to be outraged today and angry and never watch this network again. But do you think staying in your silo and only listening to people you agree with is going to make that person go away? Okay, so that was his, his reaction. You have people accusing him of basically gaslighting. Look, I will say this. There was a time, there was a window, especially after January 6th, where CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, all the major networks, they had a real decision to make. Because if that moment, they all got on the same page and said, you know what? We're just not going to talk about this guy anymore. So basically, the second he left office, if it was just like, you know what? We're going to have a de facto, unofficial, total ban of discussing this guy and what he's doing. And you basically turn on the switch of indifference. If they made that decision then, I am 100% certain we'd be in a different position today. Because that's the thing, like, when it comes to, like, loving a candidate or hating a candidate, it doesn't have the consequences you would think, right? You would think that if the media loves a candidate, they by definition do well. If they hate a candidate, they by definition do poorly. No, it's basically just more of an attention game. And so, as long as you're giving attention, whether it's love or hate, there's going to be a backlash effect. You're going to have that person gain more eyeballs and get more popularity as a result of it. The real thing that could impact a candidate is indifference. Love and hate are two sides of the same coin. It's attention, and attention is going to make them go up in the polls among some segment of the population. Indifference means they don't exist, and so they're irrelevant by their very nature. So if in that moment, right, when Trump left office, they all sort of just was like, you know what, we're done. We're not going to talk about him anymore. I, I don't think he'd be doing as well today. But they can't help themselves. They, they go along with the show. So look, at the time, I would have made that decision if I ran these networks. Just, he's a sideshow. Don't pay any attention to him. He's a clown. Let him do whatever he's going to do. But we're going to treat him like the non-issue that he is now that he lost, now that he's in the wilderness. At the time, he had like a 28% approval rating. I mean, he was going nowhere, 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 nowhere. So I would have made that decision at the time. The problem now is you already opened the door too much. You already kept giving him the attention that he craved so much. And so now not only is he leading, he's leading by a mile and a half. So now it would be, would be journalistic malpractice to not cover his candidacy, do events like debates or town halls or whatever you can get. Um, so it's a different situation now. You just can't ignore him because he's the leading contender by a lot, right? 
But look, so that's uh, Anderson Cooper's um, breakdown of the situation. You can agree or disagree with it, with it. You know, you make your own mind up. But what's interesting is Joanne Reed of MSNBC, she really, really did not like what Anderson Cooper had to say. And she gives her own uh, little monologue here. And pretty aggressively, she's going to go after him at a couple points here. Clean up on aisle five at CNN in the wake of widespread criticism over its decision to air a town hall with the twice impeached, civilly liable for sexual abuse, former President Donald Trump on Wednesday night. All right, let me just say this. Yes, you can list off all of the horrendously negative things about Trump, but like you could say the same thing about war criminal George W. Bush and war criminal Barack Obama. And like you could talk about any president in their proper context, which as Noam Chomsky would say means every post-World War II president should have been hanged. But they don't, they really do have a double standard because they don't do this with other people. They don't even do it with George W. Bush. They don't even do it with Dick Cheney. It's only for Trump that they're like, you're not allowed to do this event, right? So she, Joanne Reed does not have the same sort of criticism I have of the CNN event. She has more like AOC's criticism, which is like, how dare you platform him? Made out more like a pep rally or a MAGA version of the Jerry Springer show. On Thursday, CNN CEO Chris Licht mounted a defense of the town hall during the network's morning editorial call, insisting the spectacle served the public well, despite the widespread condemnation, even from CNN's own media reporter. I am aware that there has been uh, people with opinions uh, slash backlash, and that is absolutely uh, expected. And I will say this as clearly as I possibly can. Uh, you do not have to like uh, the former president's uh, answers, but you can't say that we didn't get them. Um, <laughs> Caitlin pressed them again and again and made news, made a lot of news. While we all may have been uncomfortable hearing people clapping, that was also an important part of the story because the people in that audience represent a large swath of America. And the mistake uh, the media made in the past is ignoring that those people exist. Why has Marianne Williamson only been invited on one of your shows? If you're going to do this thing, we're open to all voices, bro. We got to do that. Where's uh, the CNN interview with the head of the Democratic Socialists of America or an, inter an interview with a communist? See, they don't. Th th this is what annoys me about this sort of fake highfalutin rhetoric. Don't silo yourself off, good sir. You must be open to differing opinions of different people. We're doing news here. No, you're chasing ratings. You're not actually ideologically diverse. You literally do a total blackout of people who are to the left of the Overton window, you know, of what you view as mainstream America, which is not. It's just conventional wisdom, corporate world, right? But you don't actually, you're not actually open to all these different uh, views. You're literally only doing the Trump thing for ratings, which, by the way, fair enough, but just say it. Don't, don't mask it with all this garbage. That tape was obtained by FTV Live, a media website. And I should note that we have not obtained the audio recording ourselves, but it matches the multiple media reports that we had yesterday. Hours after that call, CNN anchor Anderson Cooper essentially repeated his boss's argument on his show, scolding his own viewers in what even some former CNN anchors like Sonny Hostin described as gaslighting. Anything that showed it can happen again. Now, that is what you call a straw man argument, especially that the, the only two options available to you are listening to a former president mock a woman a jury found that he sexually abused while the audience laughs and applauds, or pretending 74 million Americans who voted for Trump don't exist. But that has become a familiar tune, mainly from billionaire libertarians like Elon Musk and billionaire media moguls like Fox's Rupert Murdoch, that free speech doesn't just mean what the First Amendment says it means, that the government cannot restrict or require certain speech, but rather that unless you are willing to subject yourself personally to the farthest right, most virulently racist, misogynistic, and offensive viewpoints, just fill your psyche with it online, in the university lecture hall, or on CNN, you're against free speech. God, I hate everybody in corporate media, man. Holy cow. They're all so bad for different reasons. So, look, again, she appears to be going with the argument of, like, 
why are you platforming him? You know, he shouldn't be allowed on. And that's just, that's just a dumb argument. The real argument you have to make is you just didn't do a good job pushing back. Caitlin Collins is not ready and she'll never be ready. She doesn't have the knowledge. She doesn't have the charisma. She doesn't, she just doesn't have the gravitas or the ability to pull that off. Maybe Jake Tapper would have been positioned better to do it. Perhaps he could have been better at it. Look, I'll let's all be honest, man. I think Megyn Kelly did a great job at Fox during the debates with Trump in 2016 pushing back on him. Right? Now, you could still score the overall exchange for Trump if you think that that's true, but at least there was a real effort made to like keep his ass in check, stick to the facts and the information, and don't let him get away with garbage. The problem with the CNN town hall is that. But you have MSNBC getting on their smug high horse. Mm, yes, we'll deplatform him and pretend like he doesn't exist. Yes, let's do that. No, that's not the answer. That's not the way you deal with it. There was a brief window where you could have done that and should have done that. But now that he's leading, you have to deal with him. The question is, how do you do that? And the answer is using actual policy information and facts and aggressively getting that message across and correcting the record. But again, I don't think any of these people have the ability to do it. They're just not good at their job. Joy Henry's just not good at her job. She's not compelling. She's not interesting. She's not policy focused. She's not particularly intelligent, nor is Anderson Cooper, nor is Caitlin Collins. And so now this is like, this is like a slap fight in the schoolyard that we're watching between CNN and MSNBC. I don't think CNN is going to respond to this. I don't think Anderson Cooper is going to respond to this. But this is the first time I've ever seen CNN and MSNBC take shots directly at each other on their air airwaves. I've seen it with Fox and CNN. I've seen it with Fox and MSNBC. I've seen every iteration in that direction, but I've never seen them go at each other. But it, it's just too mwah, chef's kiss perfect that this is the thing, right? This is the thing that, that they come to a head over. MSNBC basically saying deplatform the guy, deplatform the former president and current frontrunner on the Republican side, and uh, CNN host smugly lecturing about... Uh, siloing yourself off is wrong. And it's like, CNN and MSNBC, both of you don't give nearly enough coverage to Biden's challengers. You're stuck in the conventional wisdom bubble. You would never interview a communist or somebody on the left who you think is outside the Overton window. But, you know, you do with Trump in the case of CNN. So anyway, there you have it. They're going at it. I kind of hope they keep going at it. I just think they're both really bad at their jobs for different reasons. And so... I'm not saying independent media is a panacea. Independent media has plenty of their own issues, but I like to think at least here we're better than what these guys will ever be. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.